Hello, welcome to First Word, striving to make God's Word your first priority today. God's plan for the salvation of mankind started before the foundation of the world, but God gradually over time revealed this plan to mankind until the fullness of time was come. Eve learned of a promised seed. Abraham learned of being a blessing to all mankind. David learned of an eternal kingdom. As time went on, God continued to reveal more specifics about this seed. Through the prophet Isaiah, we were told in Isaiah 7.14, Therefore the Lord will give to you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. This virgin would give birth to the Son of God. Even in his name, Emmanuel, which is interpreted for us in Matthew 1.23, God reveals more. The meaning of Emmanuel is God with us. God would indeed dwell with man. Further prophecy in Isaiah gives us more specifics. Isaiah 9, verses 6 and 7 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, then forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This son, who would be a ruler, would be a wonderful counselor. It is Jesus who, even as a 12-year-old boy, astounded the Jewish rabbis with his wisdom in Luke chapter 2. Bill Crowder writes, What is the evidence that Jesus Christ is the wonderful counselor? We see it fleshed out in a person. We read of, reflect on, and appeal for help from the one who became wisdom from God, according to 1 Corinthians 1. As Christ continued to minister publicly, the question was asked, where did this man get his wisdom? And Paul wrote in Colossians chapter 2, that in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This wonderful counselor is also the mighty God. As God, he's the creator and the sustainer of the universe. As one who is mighty, there is no other whose might can be comparable to his. But this son, Jesus, would not only have the power of God, but he would be the power of God. For each individual today that recognizes their failure to stand up and maintain God's holy standards of righteousness, John gives us this promise. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe on his name. Thank you for taking time to join us at First Word. As Christmas approaches, I hope that you will also come to know Christ as your mighty God and your wonderful counselor.